Hey, good morning, Vinod. Good morning, Daniel. Um, I'm Sage. I'm the founder of eDropIn. Uh, we believe we're creating dental school in your pocket. Um, the beginning, let me just talk about the problem. Uh, dental education and medical education, very limited access. Uh, depending on your geography, you may only have access to certain schools. It can be very expensive after undergrad to go to one of these schools. I personally know because I'm a dentist and I paid about $400,000 USD in NYU for this private education. Um, and it's inflexible and very scheduled and time constrained. So you have to follow this format even if it doesn't work for you. Our solution is to really create an on-demand platform that gives you access to global courses so you can choose the speakers you wanna learn from, saves you money and helps you get licensed and stay licensed. What have we done so far? In the last six months, we've been able to create 50 hours of certified dental content that you can watch today online, get points for it and use it towards your license. Um, how do we do in the last six months? We've had 145 users sign up to use this at $2.99 per year for subscription, which has led to about a $43,000 revenue. Um, plus, we've also had ad revenue from partners that we've worked with to place great content next to those videos because dentists obviously need to buy equipment to go alongside this education. So let's talk about the problem size because that's really the, the goal. I mean, each year, medical, stu medical school students graduate with about $2.6 billion in loans. So that's a very big number. And I know this personally because I've suffered through this as well. Um, our customer acquisition has been $0 ad spend, mostly through marketing through email, as well as word of mouth. We still have $25,000 in the bank, which is going to be used for creating more content. We've targeted about 2,000 dentists, but we have about a 38,000 dentist list pending still to target. And our ad revenue, like I mentioned, has been about 30,000. What are the three assumptions we are making as a company for this to be really big? Number one, people will always wanna pay less rather than more for quality education. Number two, they want more flexibility and convenience in their education, as well as access to things they couldn't access in their geography. And number three, dentists, doctors, lawyers are gonna to continue to be an important part of society. And that's what we need to make the assumptions to make sure that eDrop is very successful. Competition wise, there's a license on one axis and affordable. Licensed and not affordable would be like structured courses like Spear and Academy of General Dentistry versus, you know, already Coursera and Udemy have done a really good job in making affordability for undergrad courses. We fall in the category of licensed and affordable. Who is the mix in the team? I'm Sage, I'm the coder, as well as the dentist and the video maker. So it kind of makes it easy for us to create these content really fast. Sanjay is the licensing guru. He's been doing this for 12 years. He's also a dentist and Sunil manages our logistics and finances. Lastly, our next steps is to expand and grow. We're looking to hit 3,500 users as a milestone with a $1 million ARR. And on top of that, we're looking for 12 month financing to hopefully grow our content library by 10 times because we feel we have the right mix to do it really fast and expand into medicine, which we believe is a really big marketplace, just like dentistry. Our first graduating class mission would be 2025. And that's what we wanna be able to do to graduate a dental student class online and virtually, including, um, including medicine maybe in the future as well. Thank you for your time. So the obvious question comes to mind, what does dental school do offer that you don't? Currently, the, the components that they offer is your um, hands-on. And so mm -hmm. what we've been trying to do is tackle some of the hands-on component as soon as we build out the online component for all the lecture courses. Um, so ideally speaking, the cost of dental school should not be that expensive. If you look at a lot of the money where it's going, it's towards provost, it's going towards faculty and a lot of redundant um, online things, which actually COVID has kind of er like erased from what you actually need. So if you look at schools now, they're, they're struggling because they're like, why are we charging that much tuition for students when really we're not spending that much in courses anymore? Mm -hmm. um, and how many hours of content do you need to to go through a full dentistry degree that a dentist would go through? For sure. So on average, you're spending about four years, but not all of that time is just content. It's also hands-on. So I would say about two years of solid content. Um, if you take it a day, um, maybe you're doing about five to six hours of classes. So on average, you probably need about a thousand hours to maybe 2000 hours of content. That is just dental school core. What we're focusing on is obviously doing even more than that. We want to let you experience dentistry that you can be actually practicing like I have after I graduated. So a lot of the stuff they don't teach you in school either. You have to take courses for that afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, so the next question that obviously comes up is if you are a dental student and go through this, assuming you go through the 1000 hours, 
as a student and the practical training, which you'll have to do on site, uh, what are you qualified to do or not? And how much does the brand of the license matter? In the so case the brand of a dentist. Need, that's a great question. So dental degree at the end of the day, whether you get it from NYU or whether you get it from another school, as long as it's accredited in North America, you're able to practice dentistry, which means you can do everything similarly between all schools. Our role has been to always make sure we go through qualifications on our end so that way we can provide content that's certified so that way you're not getting a, something that you're not going to be able to use. Um, so our goal is to basically make sure that you graduate with an equivalent education, if not better than what one of these schools would have given you and it, along with the credentials to be able to practice and open a dental practice in your local community. I mean, so that, is, that be, is the goal. Yeah, so are you going to get accreditation? Or? That's a process. We've started with our, um, our business model has been focused on continuing education, which is the stuff that comes after dental school, because it's, it's easier in the door. And our goal is to basically build a reputation, which we've been doing for the last year, to make sure that every college knows about us. And so at that point, you know, it's really a process to show that you have the right faculty, you have the right resources to be able to provide a holistic education. So, you know, there's nothing stopping you from disrupting this model. It's honestly just been like, well, why haven't we done it? Because people didn't realize they could do it. And if you're a fast follower, what prevents NYU Dental School from offering continuing education? They already offer continuing education. I mean, honestly, we would be happy to have more people doing this because ultimately it brings the cost. It's like Tesla, transition to electric is not just their goal, it's a mission of the, the world. Ultimately, we're gonna need more dentists, we're gonna need more doctors, we're gonna need more lawyers. So we hope we can be a model that people want to replicate. But you know, our cutting edge would be that we'd be ahead because we'd be the first to it and we wanna make sure we're killing it. So we yeah, welcome competition I, I, in that sense. I would think about what would build a moat for you? Because for sure. if you Our do license... it successfully, mm -hmm. it'll be relatively easy for others to do, especially right. those that are already accredited. Yeah, it's like Toyota copying Tesla. I mean, yes, it is possible, but we're building a stack around like, you know, how we can expedite the process of entrance and acceptance. We're expediting the process of how we deliver content, how we do hands-on in a smaller micro environment rather than putting them in one big classroom. So those are going to really be harder for NYU to replicate because they have buildings and equipment set up in one place. We're looking at more of a, how can we do this at your local practice in your community and rather than having one localized place. So for us, it's a, the model is very different and that's what builds the mode around it.